um, working scared and and so so what's driving you? Are you an adrenaline junkie? Or are you what's behind Amy and, and sort of being able to hold all these different things? Right. I don't, out there. I'm not an I'm not an adrenaline junkie. Well, this so this is the part that maybe can't go into anyone's training is that like I feel like a lot of people that work in this industry um, may have their own well, I don't say maybe their own personal issues, but those there's something about being involved in um, this dr dr drama, you know, something about being involved in a conflictual situation and being able to s and problem solve that that they yearn for. And so I think a lot of people in this industry, like, you do it as your job, and you know, you do it really well, but you do it as your job so that in your personal life, in your private life, you don't have that. You're able to be more calm you know, more calm with your friends and maybe have a less conflict at home. Or, or that's how I see it. And I see that for several people that I work with. Like, we're the most laid back people when we walk out the door here. But when we're here, we're in the middle of everything that's going on and like really, really gun ho for it. So I think there's that piece to it um, that kind of keeps you going in this job. But for, but I've been doing this for a long time now, like 10 years now. And um, with this new job that I got, like really more what I'm into is the idea of um, to make it, making it making the process easier for people. Um, and not for the people that work here, because it's never going to be easy for us, because there's always going to be a new form. And like, I've come to <laughs> I've come to accept that over time. But you know, for like the foster parents that we're working with, like how to help them navigate the system better. Like how, you know, like how can we really educate these people about what they're about to walk into when they come in, when they come through the door? Because right. I think if we can give them more education on the front end, then the more likely we are to retain them for the long run. So like, how, how can we better suit them you know, but this particular job that I have, like, also I'm really interested in, like, the programming for our teens. Um, that's what I've been working with for probably the last two years is mostly really high-end teens that are... Pop, As a foster care worker. <coughs> foster care worker, yeah. Those, kind of those kids that pop from place to place and are high needs and, you know, always suspended, always, you know, always something. And, like, the best moments I've had with these kids are when we're able to finally go get their go get their driver's license so they can get a job and like going through that process helping them like you know helping them okay you got this job now what do we need and helping them get like the correct shoes and their in their work uniforms and and preparing for that and you know on the like the other side of that like helping them with their interview skills and stuff like that's what I really like and I think that's what these kids need because it's like if I have to get one more case of a mom or I get her two-year-old in my caseload because she just got out of foster care and now she's a hot mess it's like we don't need any more of those cases like um what is the word for that is that recidivism recidivism recidivism, yeah. recidivism. like you know that's that's such a great need and there's still kids themselves there are still kids babies yeah. having babies yeah um so I just think there's so much work that can be done there with those older kids, you know, that they don't have to repeat the same cycles of mistakes that their parents made. Because a lot of these kids that I'm talking about, like, reunification is long gone for their for their parents. You know, maybe we're trying to work them out to be with their grandma or something, but, um, but you know, they're kind of their own independent people at this point in time. They've been through so much in their life. They're survivors. Like, they understand how to get their needs met. You know, whether it's legal or illegal, they're going to make it happen. So, you know, how can we own them to be productive citizens? And I've been really fortunate. There's this one uh, young lady that I work with who goes to Western Carolina. And I sat and had lunch with her the other day, and I was just like, you know, tell me your turning point. I know her. You she's know? impressive. You, yeah, um, MB. Yeah. She's amazing. And I was like, tell me what your turning point I got to ride in the was. car with her for like an hour. Did you? And just same sort of thing. Just like, you know, yeah. I was just overcome with. And she, you know, and her answer to me was that she's like, well, I sat in a meeting and everybody I was with told me that I was going to be just like my mom when I turned 18. And she said, screw that, I won't be like my mom. And I'm sure she used more choice words than that because, yeah. <laughs> because of who she is. But, you know, and she was like, screw that, I'm not going to do it. And so, you know, here she is, um, you know, she's about to be a young mom, um, but she's also about to be, you know, finish up her junior year in college. Like, she's, she's amazing. Um, you know, and I feel like there needs to be more kids like that and trying to, it's one thing to say and it's another thing to figure out a pathway to get there. And so that's what I'm about is trying to build some channels for these kids. So we went off on a totally different topic there, which is awesome. I'm going to bring right, it back totally to, different topic. <laughs> and we may revisit it in a moment if that's right. okay. But I wanted to get back to um, the family that you worked with and, and, um, and we were sort of talking about the difference between holding the, the fear Right, which I think sort of pushed us into this place. Mm -hmm. But what difference do you think your ability to slow down and, and 
take the time. To me, it sounds like you just decided I'm going to take the, I'm going to take whatever time it needs to make this work, as opposed to we talked about the rush and the, we get stuck in the whirlwind and everything's go 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 and we've got limited time. But what about you made you decide? You know what? Screw it. I'm going to slow down. I'm going to do Sunday dinner. I'm going to ride in a car for eight or ten hours and just really give it this effort. What? What about well, you decided to do that? What difference does that make? Well, I think the. Well, for this family, I mean, I want to 